The results were expected next morning, but surprising announcements appeared by early evening. The the first reports, in fact, came from Fars News,、um, which put up a, an initial story saying what the actual results were, and it was well ahead of its time. Obviously, it had been prepared in advance, and it wasn't long before it disappeared. Someone had had pressed the wrong button, and、uh, one of the announcements got out of order. British Greek reporter Yasin Athanasiadis was driving into Tehran. As we came over the hill and we saw Tehran for the first time,、uh, it seemed as if parts of the cities were, were were sunk in darkness. It must have been between nine and ten that we got a phone call from、uh, a journalist friend saying that Fars News Agency had published a story claiming that Ahmadinejad had won with over 60 percent of the vote. A little bit later, we heard that Kehan, the conservative newspaper, had closed its、uh, front page for the next day, saying that Ahmadinejad had won with 63 percent, which ended up to be the final tally.、Um, so we're very confused inside that car, and already we're hearing stories that there had been、uh, rioting at one poll station. So as we're coming back into the city, we were definitely under the impression that. Um, this was the beginning of something that was going to be quite big. The opposition refuted government claims, saying they were in front. We are in every case. We are in the case of the protests. We are in the case of the protests. In the confusion, focus fell on the Interior Ministry, where the votes were supposed to be tallied. It was probably around 10 o'clock, and still some of the polling stations were not yet closed. But we were surprised to see that right there, where the Ministry of Interior building is, which is of course where they were going to do all the voting and the tabulations for this election, they sealed it off with concrete. There were three layers of police cars that were also lined up, and then riot police had been marshaled behind that. The opposition claimed the votes were not fully counted. What went on inside the ministry that night? Remains unclear. Outside, for supporters of President Ahmadinejad, the election seemed to be over. Somehow, it felt like the end of everything. Especially that feeling of being conned. That was the most upsetting thing. They had made us go to the voting booths so they could film those long queues. And unwittingly, I'd helped them gain their legitimacy. Much was made of Ahmadinejad's margin of victory. Ahmadinejad broke the 1997 record of former President Mohammad Khatami, who got over 20 million. 63 percent was the figure leaked the previous night, before the polls had closed. Meanwhile, Mr. Hossein Mousavi has strongly protested the vote calling it a charade. One employee of Press TV. Iran's state English language station was shocked at her channel's coverage. So my colleague calls and he said, "Like, why aren't you at work?" And I just said, "I'm not coming to work." And he said, "Oh, wow. Well, maybe you can come tomorrow. Maybe we can get someone else to do the show today." I'm like, "No, I'm I'm really not coming to work anymore because I'm not happy with the coverage of of this network. I, I don't I don't I cannot do this." Faranak quit state TV in protest, a step that would lead her to forced exile. For now, she joined thousands of angry opposition supporters on the streets. Neda was also among them. To get their message out, some began to upload their phone footage via the internet and onto broadcasters abroad, like BBC Persian, the Farsi TV station based in London. 
این که بعضیا میگفتن نیست مثل اینکه یکم بیشتر تعداد تو سایت فیسبوک هم مردم از you know, the election became like a baptism of all of my our audience to to reporters they suddenly became reporters uh, instead of the just pure TV audience نوید اینو از تهران خیابون ولی اصل برای ما فرستاده با هم که ببینیم The crowd was getting bigger and bigger. People from the shops, they just shut down their stores, joined the crowd. And there were people on the buildings going like this, behind the windows and stuff. And um, they would, or they would come down. And they were like, all these, all these old ladies, we were crying. They were like, yeah, go, go, girl. And then all of a sudden, um, this caravan of motorbikes just got into the crowd and started beating people. We heard screams from ahead of us. And we started seeing motorbikes. Uh, it was the first time we saw these motorbikes with the black suited, you know, Robocops with the body armor just coming down in our lane in the opposite direction on the pavements uh, with gloves in their hands and they were hitting women and men. But the, the really shocking thing was seeing these women that were running to escape and they were just getting clubbed down. You know, I'd never seen anything like this in three years of living in Iran. I'd never seen these, you know, young, lean, extremely mean, coiled menace. With foreign journalists increasingly restricted in their coverage, protesters' phone cameras now became weapons of resistance. Fon Mikta as Tehran be mami peyvande ruye khat yek. Cell phone is not a camera. Cell phone is sitting uh, in the place of their eyes. It's just like they are watching the events through that cell phone, through that witness who, who sent us the material. And it clearly has a stronger emotional effect. <laughs> We were a few girls, and we we thought that if we stand on the front line and start throwing stones, you know, um, the police would be more hesitant to shoot at a girl or beat a girl. Um, little did we know that we would be the first people to get actually attacked. All of a sudden, I just felt something in my knee. It was so painful that. It's, blacked out, I passed out. Faranak had been shot in the leg with a plastic bullet. The hospital was packed with the injured. I mean, I saw things, I mean, it was so disturbing, I couldn't stop crying. And then um, I, I thought that, you know, all these people are gonna die in front of me, it was so bad. And then, I mean, my uncle's friend just left me. And then some, some passengers attacked the ER of the hospital. And these people are like screaming and running away. And it's just so bad. They were with sticks. They actually wanted to hit people who were laying down on the ground, on the floor, because there wasn't even enough space. <laughs> There was a pregnant woman, they had broken her arm. Um, there, I, there was blood everywhere and the, the hospital staff, they were freaking out. They were so scared. They were like, we have, we have no idea what... And a lot of these uh, nurses didn't even know what was going on in the streets because they had been there all day and they were like, we don't know what is going on. There were people with, who got stabbed. Heads broken, arms broken, rubber bullets in the chest, and it was, it was really scary, very scary. Neda tried to convince Caspian to join her. 
She joined the protest.